so here we go we got a first issue with the unit and so far I looked up the code it's goes for E05 welcome to Jeeper gear today we're gonna talk about welcome to Jeeper gear where my neighbors mow their lawns when I make videos hey what's up guys how's it going so today I'm gonna talk about a heater that I bought for a camping purpose so that basically at night we're, we don't freeze to death while we're camping let's check it out okay so this is it this is the little nifty heater deal so it's just like the other ones that you've seen let's see here's the little booklet to get an idea this is what they look like but this one already came with the case. This was roughly $170 or $180, which was not bad. How it came. This one already came with a case here. Let's take a look at this. So here's our fused connection to the battery. Looks like I'm gonna have to put some alligator clips on or some sort of a round connectors. Oh, that's kind of funny. You can't take the shroud off before you with the cap still being on. The instructions that come with this thing is quite interesting. Looks like they've been translated from probably Chinese or maybe from a different language because I feel like this this thing looks like the Wabasto, um, the German um, cabin heater and I think this could have been like this is like a replica of that. Yeah, that's kind of how all that looks like. Anyway, so that's it for the instructions. Let's take a look what it comes with. So it comes with this little digital remote control, which we'll have to get some batteries for. Looks like it takes some AAAs. Exhaust, some sort of muffler exhaust. Exhaust pipe, intake pipe with a filter of sort. Then a baggie with Clamps, bolts, things like that to attach all that and assemble it. Then your looks like it's a standard three inch heat outlet pipe. So that would go right here and then towards so go be like so. Then you would just ex extend it out to a tent or your vehicle or whichever. Alright, so well, let's assemble it and then kind of go from there to see how it works out. assembled uh, got it running and this is what it's doing right now here let's switch the camera view okay right now it's blowing nice hot air I'm running it off of a uh, old Mercedes battery that I have it's drawing you know between 12 1 to 12 2 volts initially on the startup it draw down to like 11.2 volts, which was kind of interesting. But anyways, right now it's just blowing nice, hot, dry air. Like I, I there's literally no smell of diesel or any other thing like that whatsoever. Uh, I do see, however, the flaw in my plan with the exhaust. I need to point it the other way <laughs> because the intake for this hose is on this side so I mean if you know good wind and everything it would blow the fumes into here so I need to change that that was kind of a stupid thing for me to do 
anyways I cannot figure out the remote because it's all in Chinese so when I pressed that's what it's showing me so I have no idea what it's supposed to be what is it doing yeah so honestly that's useless can't use that unless somebody speaks Chinese and can translate what that says uh, let's see I'm not sure what that means so it doesn't really react or anything like that and right now let's see so it's been going for a couple of minutes yeah it's the, the air is hot enough to where it's you know I can't keep my hand in front of it it's really hot anyway the pump is working well just keeps priming so the int you know the pump intake is right here in the corner so obviously that means that you know, once you go below this level, it's going to be useless. Ah, that exhaust is really hot. Ah, that didn't feel good. Got a red spot. Anyways, it works. Uh, just got to figure out how I can route the exhaust properly. Maybe do it differently. Or maybe I'll just, when I get to camp, I'll just route it out somewhere towards the side completely and kind of go from there. So, yay! Hope everybody's doing well and outside and camping and be doing things outdoors with their family and just kind of enjoying this beautiful weather. So today I wanted to show a diesel heater from what I got from Amazon. So I got it all set up here into my tent. Let's check it out. This is what I kind of did here. <laughs> Instead of uh, using that in exhaust or heat exhaust hose on there, I just bought the new three inch 25 foot from Home Depot um, flex hose and use that throughout the heat and then use that one as a uh, heat buffer for that because we got kids running around here and stuff like that so less chances of them touching something like that just in case so i'm running this thing off of a uh, mercedes battery right now it works so far it pulls it pretty good I'm just kind of uh testing everything out to make sure everything works before we go to bed so at the moment let's take a look here. It's been running for 20 minutes and uh, I have it set at the lowest setting, let's say 1.4, 1.5, uh, roughly draw, draws about 12.5 to 12.6 uh, of battery. Our, I think that's elevation about thousand meters up. I don't know what that means. Okay. So this thing is chugging along right now. Warming things up. Hot. Yes, baby, hot. this is really hot. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Told you don't touch it. Don't touch that either. Hot. Yeah, go. So yeah, definitely gonna have to work on building some sort of barrier around that exhaust that's a minus. so here we go we got a first issue with the unit and so far i looked up the code it's calls for e05 it looks like the air code states that there's an overheat issue so either the box itself is uh, not letting it cool off fast enough uh, the unit itself getting too hot or perhaps it's an issue of me having installed this really long duct for it to push the air through. So let's see what we can do about that. Alright, so, so far 
I shortened it down, moved everything over close to the tent to accommodate for the shorter length of the band. And uh, it's been running so far for about 10 minutes at the moment. Uh, not really showing any error codes. Still all zeroed out. Kind of soon to tell, but uh, I'll just keep an eye on it and uh, go from there. And I'll report back if something else happens. Hey, good morning. Quick little update. So last night we had an EO5 code happen again. Uh, the, I left the hood on it, and when you touch the hood on the side, it felt pretty hot. So at that point, I was like, okay, so we got it remote. Took it off, it shut down, it cooled off, and then turned back on it again, and hasn't been having any issues at 2.2 hertz. And, you know, kept our kept us pretty comfortable at night throughout the whole evening since about 9 o'clock last night till roughly about 7.30, 8 o'clock today in the morning. It's been off now for about eh, roughly about an hour or so. So, yeah, I think uh, in general it did what it was designed to do, really. I think it's meant, the unit itself is meant for colder climates. In northwest region we should probably have it, or should probably have some sort of venting going on around the apparatus itself so we can vent better and kind of cool down more efficiently. Other than that, I think what we're going to do is uh, just keep on monitoring, see how we will perform. So as far as fuel consumption goes, so from 9 o'clock to about, what, 8 o'clock today in the morning, this is how much fuel it used up at about, it's on a low setting, I would say. First, for the first couple hours, it ran on a 1.4 hertz, which is the lowest you can go. And then I picked it up to 2.2, and that's what a half hour shut down because of the code situation issue so I filled it to about this point right here so that's right you know about half a tank been used up on the low setting this thing is roughly four liters I believe four or five liters so that's your consumption for overnight overall so far, it's, a, it's pretty great. We were super comfortable. The kid loved it. He was just passed out snoozing throughout the whole night. No cold sweats, nothing, which was great. And it was just kind of trying to figure out also what, what temp to run it out or whatever. So yeah, so far pretty happy. Uh, Noise-wise, since I took the shroud off, it's a little bit more noisy, but and plus it's really right next to our head right there. I think I could probably actually run a longer um, venting because uh, I, I, at first I thought that perhaps the issue was it was too long it was hard to push it through it was getting too hot but I guess it's just with the hood being on there it just makes it run hotter so at this point you know so far so good it's been great it keeps us super comfortable all right I guess uh, if anything else develops overnight or I mean overnight <laughs> tomorrow night or tomorrow and it's gonna be any different well i'll get you guys an update on that okay so until let's see what happens hey guys so just wanted to give you guys a quick update on this unit and how it has been doing for the past couple of days so first things first uh how much power does it take on startup so that's going to be roughly about 10 to 11 amp hours uh or amps uh let's see and then what about the low settings? And the low setting is going to be roughly 1.1 uh, .1 to 1.2 amp hours of draw down, uh, draw power throughout, mm, yeah, per, per hour. Uh, on the medium setting, it's roughly about 2, uh, 1.9 to 2 amp hours. Uh, on a uh, the high power is about 3.7 amps. So that's kind of where you guys can expect on your drawdowns on the electrical current and things like that so you know what kind of power bank you would need to run this thing i'm running the a95 amp hour battery from the mercedes and it works out pretty well um i could you know if without recharging i could probably use it two three nights in a row and it, i think it would have been still fine uh, i use my truck to recharge it 
uh, to keep it all tipped off. And uh, I think for the past two nights, I just hooked the battery clamps, you know, the cables from the battery of the truck to the battery um, that runs the unit. And not a single issue. The little digital monitor inside the truck shows me that it's still within 95 to 100% capacity um, of the whole power. I think it reads both of them. Anyways, next. Uh, so on the shutdown, again, uh, it has to cool off. It depends on if you were using lo low power, high power setting, or medium power setting. Your cool down time will also vary between three minutes to five minutes before it ramps down and just kind of shuts down. Uh, power wise, so it's going to take about also about 10 to 11 amp hours uh, to cool off, uh, to burn through all the suit and all the stuff that's you know built up inside through using it. So uh, you should probably expect roughly anywhere between 150 watts to or you know roughly 12 amp hours of drawdown on your battery um, throughout the eight hour to 10 hour usage, depending on your uh, let's see, what's, what's the best way to say it? Uh, the length of usage and how intense you're gonna run the heater. Now, for fuel consumption, I uh, this is not measured, this is more calculated. It comes out to roughly about 100 milliliters uh, per kilowatt uh, per hour or kilowatt hour of heat. Um, I've been able to on low setting for both nights anywhere between eight hours to nine hours. I used up roughly between 1.1 liters to 1.2 liters. So as far as my things with uh, issues with the unit while using it, uh, the first, I think first two days were more prob problematic just because I did not, the unit, did not know the unit in depth, uh, how it works, what it needs and how much airflow it needs. So there was some issues where I put in the 25 foot three inch duct and it had an issue where it just could not push the volume of air and fast enough to keep the unit cool and the sensor would just go off and shut the unit down. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what I had to do is I cut it back to roughly about yeah, seven feet. I straightened out all the bends. That way it had a straight air flow or flow through. Um, the output from the output and then kind of through the pipe make sure that it's nice and even or has a gradual rise to the top of the tent that's kind of uh the whole deal with this unit in a nutshell hopefully this is this was helpful in some ways to some of the people that are going to be going out camping and you know they can stay warm so i already have a couple ideas in mind to improve on the system um, instead of using the truck, I think I'm going to look for a 150 watt um, solar setup with a controller in order to maybe just, you know, put it on top of my truck. It's most places that I go to, they have some, a lot of abundance of sun during the day. So that would be able to recharge the batteries for the next night's use. Okay, until next time, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.